Hi, this is Ron Martin at ronmartblog.com, and I'm going to teach you today how to use uh, Epson luster paper with a R3000 and Adobe Photoshop CS6, and we're on a Mac running OS uh, X 10.8.2. So we'll do File Print, and the first thing we want to do is go through and set all of our settings for our, our printer. In Photoshop and let's also make sure that we're using the right printer so if you have multiple printers um, select the correct one notice that it says Epson Stylus Pro in parentheses that's because I'm using a network connection for mine or network cable so it has this funny number um, but what you actually want to uh, do is um, make sure you're choosing the right one the information is in parentheses if you don't have parentheses then it'll be like this one here or <laughs> where if you're just connected by USB or uh, Firewire or something uh, it'll just show you the number or the uh, printer name so let's make sure we set our layout and this is obvious you look over here see what happens don't worry about the kind of funny noise you see on my image here that's something to do with uh, my computer right now um, but it prints just fine so I'm going to choose Photoshop manages color and the reason why I do that is that I want to be able to tell um, the printer what profile to use and I do that through Photoshop so if I scroll through this list what I want to do is I want to find the premium luster now it's just gotta be careful there's glossy and semi-gloss what you want is premium luster I know it's weird that it says SPR 3000 what it's saying it's the R3000 printer they use a Spectralina Lina, um, color profile device and it's on a premium luster. So we're going to say send 16 bit data. Doesn't hurt anything. I haven't noticed that it helps anything, but it doesn't hurt anything. Um, rendering intent. I usually print a relative color metric. You'll hear people sometimes recommend using others. Use whatever you find works best for your image, uh, and it will vary from image to image. But nine times out of ten, I find relative color metric meets my needs. Always have black point compensation checked. We generally, I like our pic uh, pictures centered, so I'll usually do that. For scaled print size, I like to do mine at 100% because I want to make sure that my print resolution is the same as my printer. But if you want to hit click scale to fit media so that it fits in perfectly, that's fine. Generally speaking, your images are going to look great that way and you'll be satisfied. If you're a really hardcore printer, um, then do the scaling in Photoshop and don't let the driver do it. I'm going to leave that cleared for mine. Um, now I'm going to choose print settings. And over here for paper size, one thing that's really important to notice is that when I scroll over here, oops, I'm sorry. Um, if I stop for a second, you'll see this little yellow tooltip, and that tells me my top and bottom margins. And I want to make sure that I'm always choosing papers that have a top and bottom margin or left and right margin that are the same. If I choose one that's different, then my image won't print centered in the page, regardless of what I choose in Photoshop. And these zeros, that's naturally because it's borderless. There are no uh, borders when you do borderless, so that's why it's saying zero. Choose the value that works best for you. This is for the front feeder. We generally don't want that one. Um, so I'm going to say US letter because I'm fine with just printing it through the regular uh, print path. And then color matching. If we did things right, it'll be disabled. Um, if we forgot to choose uh, let Photoshop manage colors right here, then um, this would be enabled. So that's bad. Um, paper handling. Again, that's our paper size that we chose earlier, and this is just saying that do we want to let the printer do additional scaling to make sure it fits the suggested paper size. And uh, we can check this or we can clear it depending on our needs. I usually leave it checked just to make sure I don't make any mistakes. Printer settings. This is where we need to be very careful. Make sure we choose the correct media type. This is not the paper profile. This is telling the printer how thick the paper is and how fast to print it and um, how long to let the ink dry and so on. And so we want to choose ultra premium photo paper luster. A lot of words, but um, that's our luster paper from Epson. If you're using a luster from a third party, um, they may make a different recommendation. 
Um, so be sure to follow the recommendation of the paper that you're using. This is all for Epson paper. Now, for um, resolution, any of these values are fine, honestly. But we always like to say, hey, I paid for 5760, let's use 5760. So sure, why not? Let's set that. Um, high speed, this just says that when the printer's going left and right, left and right, we want to make sure that it prints both directions. If we turn that off, it'll just print one time, come back without printing, and then print again. So it'll double your print speed. The, the reason why you would want to clear that is if you had a paper where it didn't dry quickly. But this paper dries very quickly, so you can use high speed. Not a problem at all. Uh, oh, and uh, advanced color settings. This doesn't apply for this particular printer, but you may see in other printers your profile name and so on um, in that uh, location. Page layout settings. If we were printing with a roll, this would be enabled. We're not printing with a roll, or if we were doing borderless, this would be enabled. We're not doing borderless, so uh, we'll skip past that. Advanced media control, don't touch anything in here. Most of this has been predetermined by your um, media type that you selected, and so you'll only change that if you're having problems with your printer uh, printing too uh, close and you know, scratching or um, something's not quite quite working right with your media type. If you're using Epson papers, that should never happen. So I've got all my settings set properly. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to make sure nothing's changed in here, make sure everything looks okay. All looks good to me. So now I'm ready to print. Hit print. And oops, we're getting a message here. And I did that intentionally. The reason why we're seeing that message is because remember how I said in Photoshop I wanted it to print at 100%. I didn't choose the scale to fit option where it reduced it to 97.6%. Uh, if I check that option I won't see this and I'll just print. I can choose to proceed um, despite that fact. What will happen is, is it'll print as close as it can to the edge but it'll also um, potentially clip a little bit off the top and bottom. So if I'm okay with it clipping I'll hit proceed. If I'm not I hit cancel. I don't actually need to print today, so I'm going to go ahead and choose cancel. And that is the end of this tutorial. I hope you appreciate it. Please visit me at runmart.blog.com for printing discounts, uh, tutorials, and a whole lot more. Thank you.